Guys, in this video, I'm trying to reach the rating of 1800. We have 25 points to go. Let's get started. First opponent, ooh, is playing the... Okay, they're pre-moving everything. They're playing the London system. So I will show you how to defeat the London system. There we go. So I even have a video where they explain all the theory, but let's put the theory into practice. Then maybe you can check out that video after. Okay, so my opponent is taking here. So this is a bit of an unexpected move. I expect a bishop to go back. I will just take here. What I will play here is uh, play for the move e5. So I will play knight there. Okay, they are kind of prepared. They are trying to block it. Uh, very smart. First of all, I could win a pawn here. But I don't think I want to go farm pawns like this. I think I will just castle. That's the right way to go. And uh, then, how you play in this position, you have to develop all your pieces, but you have a big problem. Look at this bishop, is crying. It's crying right now. So you have to activate your pieces. How do you do it? You will play fianchetto, then you will play the move c5, or maybe first the move c5 and then the fianchetto is basically the same. And then you have to kick this knight away from here. How to do it? You move this knight to the center and then you play f6. Now, my opponent didn't play really a London system because they have played the move c4, so this changes everything. But it doesn't change my plan. Because I will still go for the center. Right now, I have the possibility to create really an uncomfortable position for my opponent. I can take here, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, and this pawn will be isolated. Now, I can take back with the knight. That's all, all right. If my opponent takes here, I win the knight. So, shouldn't happen. All good, all good. I mean, I could take here, I could take here, and play so many moves, but you know what? I'll simply play pawn here. I want to go with the bishop out, ready for fianchetto. If I win this game, I win 10 points, by the way. That would be lit. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> What's this? I take a free piece. Wow. Did you know that 1800 can blunder a piece in one? move yes okay i don't even take here i just develop a knight protecting the queen this is much better you know when you are winning on material you have two approaches to win the game approach number one very simple and quite safe trade all the pieces you can trade and move to an end game usually to win an end game with an extra piece is quite simple so you should be able to do that Second approach, as you have more pieces, you can try to not trade too much, but give checkmate. Because you will have for sure more attackers than defenders, <laughs> so you should be able to, to win. Yeah. So in this position, we are already in an end game, so it's good to trade as much as I can, I guess. Let's bring the rook active, maybe the rook on the second rank. Also in general, this is a general tip, no matter if you're having an advantage or not. Active pieces. Find the best of each piece. So this rook... As an amazing, as an amazing spot here on the second rank, so that's good. This bishop is right now slipping, uh, so I will have to activate it. Uh, this knight is doing well, but not really so well because they cannot move on. So maybe this knight would be perfectly placed here, one step in front, but not so easy to get there. What do we play? So I have an idea. I will go with the knight here attacking the pawn, and once the pawn get pushed. I could go either here or there with the knight. Uh, and if the pawn doesn't get pushed, then I will push this pawn, trading my weak pawn for a strong pawn of my opponent. Okay, great. Let's go with the knight here, because I want to push here and then go there. They cannot castle because they lose another piece, so they have to stay with the king in the middle of the board. Okay, I don't understand completely this move. We'll bring a rook preparing this move i have to pay attention not to get a checkmate on the back rank so i mean let's play h6 at the next move just just in case i mean not really i will not play just in case uh you should play just in case but uh, i will first open up the center and and always keep an eye on it because i think like it's more urgent to try to remove this pawn because like this i activate my bishop as well Right now this bishop is crying and I don't want to let my pieces cry. My king could be crying later, but there is no hurry to play the move h6. So I will play it, but later on. But remember to play that move. That's that's important. 
Okay, spicy bishop attacking my rook. I'll go to attack this pawn. And now attention, because if I play the move h6, well, that's not really a square where my king can go. Uh, so, I, but if I play g6, okay, you know what? I'm not in a hurry again. Okay, we take a free pawn. That's great. My opponent is speeding up. I have no idea why. Now we give a check. We're about to win the rook. They have to go back here with the rookie. And we trade and we push the pawn even forward. This is amazing. There we go. Now, if king here, I'll give a check. Oh my god. I'm predicting all the moves of my opponent. And now, king here, I'll push. Bim, boom, bam. Or maybe not. I will go with the knight there. Because, you know, if I would have pushed. Okay, let's go here with the knight. I'm aiming for the square. Bang. Wait, should I do that? Well, I'll play first this, and then I push. That's great. King here. That's great. That's basically only move. Okay, I'll go here. I want to take this pawn as well. Now, this rook cannot be moved because if not, this pawn is lost with check. Then I'm pushing this pawn. I mean, any, everything I have to do here is promote a pawn. We take. Okay, let's play this just in case. You know, I don't want to get <laughs> back, back rank. Okay, we take here. Okay, and now we can simply do... What can we do here? So I would like to give a check. So I will play rook here because I want to give a check there. And then the king has to move and I can push. Whoa. Check everybody. Push everybody. I pre-move no matter where the king goes. The king can go on e3 from this square that they are attacking the, the rook. But, but you see... Bang! Also, my bishop is attacking the other rook, and I'm promoting. That's what is very important. And now we promote. You're very happy about it. Very happy about it. My opponent can resign for real now. But they don't! They don't resign. There is a knight. A free knight. Should I promote check? Yeah, it's fine. Now we go here. I just want to end this game quite quickly. Okay, we'll go here attacking, then we'll give a check, and then we'll push this pawn. Check, and maybe bishop here, trying to trade. Because there is just one last trick, is that they want to push here, taking this pawn. I mean, even if they do, they don't achieve much, but let's just avoid that for forever. Now, this bishop has to move here if they want to keep pieces, and then my pawn is just rolling. And what is very nice... What is extremely nice. Okay, now an easy trick. You want to promote this pawn? You know what you do? Okay, they might just resign. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying that they might just resign since a very long time. But now they must resign. No. Okay, what you do is that you block this file with the rook. Right? You block it. And we blink the rook here. And then you push and baby the pawn. And you promote. And the king cannot get there because the rook is stopping. The rook is stopping it, so it just cannot go there. I don't know what my opponent is doing. Listen, I, I will let them do everything. I will let them promote because I have checkmate. Let's make it funny. I, I will let them promote. Yeah, push. No, they are, don't even, um, they are not even in time to promote. No, they are in time to promote. They can promote. But there is checkmate. Yeah, that's the point. No, they can just promote with check. All right. Bing, bong, bang. <laughs> oh my god. New game. Don't play the London system. Don't play the London system, guys. New game. When playing versus Snitzo, we are playing e4. We play e5. We go with the knight out. We protect. Okay, let's go with the knight here. Let's see, do they go fried lever? No, but they play knight there. You know that this move is not the best move in this position. Usually white is playing the move d3 to so protect his pawn with a pawn. You might say, why? Well, because now I can take. And you might say, what? This knight can't be taken, but now we have a fork. And that's the trick. We took a pawn, we have a fork. Right now we got a very nice position where we already have the bishop here. My opponent is now going back, attacking the queen. I mean, we'll simply retreat all the way back. Now we have the bishop here. That's the only the only difference. Meaning that we have two bishops. My opponent has a bishop and a knight. 
You might ask, okay, but both pieces have a value of 3. What do you mean by bishop pair? Well, the bishop pair means that you have the pair of bishops, meaning that with these two bishops, you can control every single square on the chessboard, which is quite cool, especially when there is not a blocked center. So if the center will be blocked by many pawns that cannot be moved, then the bishop will don't have much space. But in this position, the center is so much open that the bishop are having such a fun time. And the difference between a bishop and a knight is that the bishop can move so fast from one side to the other of the board. So if there is not a crowd in the center of the board, they are very fast to move from one side to the other. The knight instead is very slow, can jump around, but in close position, the knight can still jump around. So that's the difference. Open position, great bishops. Uh, close position, great knights. What do we do here? So we castle and we develop. So it's time to make a plan. What's our plan? Uh, we have more space in the center. We have an open position. What we can try to do is to improve really all, 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 all the pieces. So what do we need to improve still? The queen and the rook. So we bring the queen up, connecting the rooks, and then we bring the rooks to the open files. E file and D file. This is our not really open file because open file are those where no pawns is standing. Uh, those are semi open files, but still great for rooks or at least the great files for the rooks in such a position. Now, uh, as I said before, the bishops are better in open position, so I don't want to trade this bishop for the knight, so I simply go back. This looks like a passive square, but still, there is not really a difference from this place to this place, because still the bishop is controlling all these squares. Not really a difference. So we bring also this other rook into the center. You might have noticed that we have castle on opposite side of the board. And if you watch my videos since some time, you might know that I stress the points that when opposite side castling, you have to attack. Uh, this is true, you have to attack, but when the center is open, you can also just play for the center. You don't have absolutely to play for the side. You absolutely have to play for the side when the center is closed. This position is also fine to play for the center of the board. And I go with the knight in the center. You know, I made a quote that is the following. Knight in the center makes your opponent surrender. <laughs> you can basically put any piece in the center to make your opponent surrender, but I think the knight is quite strong, so it works very well with knight. But you can say the same, like a uh, queen in the center, a uh, bishop in the center, but knight in the center is very strong. So now what do we have? We have the bishop pair versus the knight pair, and I have a very insidious move, well, or series of moves. I could go queen d5, then queen here, sneaking my queen, maybe even sacrificing the bishop. I think this is a great plan, so I will start to go. Would be so good to bring a rook also, but the rook cannot go through this square because there is a knight that is attacking it. So how to do it? I have no idea, but we'll find a way. Uh, maybe I could play c5, c4. I could try, yeah. It looks nice because this knight is protected just by the pawn. So this cannot be taken, as in the previous game, right? Where my opponent took the pawn and then lost the knight. Not really good. Ooh, my opponent would like to trade queens. And they are also threatening this move. Oh, 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 oh. I might have to trade. That's unfortunate. E3. Because I would have preferred to keep the queens on the board in such a position. Okay, you know what? We'll try to see. Does my opponent really wants to trade? Because now I'm saying, okay, get wrecked, queen. Get out of here. Um, and if they trade, okay, fine. We are in an endgame. Uh, it's not such a big deal as before because, ooh, they are not trading. That's cool. They also want to go for a spicy position. That's great, but I think I will now go for it. So the, the threat is quite simple. I want to give a check, then the king has to move here, then I take. Then the rook can protect. So not sure if it's actually the best thing ever. But you know what we do? We slide with the rook. The rook is getting to the party. Rook b5 would be great. Before we couldn't slide on d6, we said, but you see, there is a way on d5. Then we go on b5, we are attacking the spawn. Why didn't I give a check in gear and take there? Because there are rooks that are coming to defend the king. And I don't know if I can really pull... What? Okay, this is nearly checkmate, basically. Okay, but I will play first this move. 
because I'm attacking the spawn as well, which is not so easy to defend. And if the spawn is pushed, well, this is checkmate in one move. So my opponent shouldn't do that. But how do they perfect that pawn? Well, if the knight goes here, I simply take and I'm going to take their next. Um, uh, if knight here, I simply take, take, win a pawn, attacking this one. And this king is crying for real. That king is screaming for help, but nobody is responding. Well, nobody is basically even close to the king to listen. The queen is just out with the knight, dancing in a nightclub, not caring about his own king. And that's not good, because now the king is getting checkmated. That conversation was getting awkward, by the way. Let's focus on chess. <laughs> but I'm threatening mates. And I don't think my opponent has something to do here. Oh, well, the king can start to run. Run. Oh, the queen. The queen is just now, just now back from the party saying hello there. But the king is already in big danger. You know, all the enemies entered the house. And now the bishop has been sacrificed because after pawn takes, the rook is sliding, sliding, sliding to give checky, checky, matey, matey. And there is no way to avoid it because if the pawn doesn't take, well, then the bishop is going to take. And this is also going to be a check matey in a bit more moves, but still check matey. Bing, boom, bang, boom. Okay, bing. Wait, maybe we take with the rook because that's better. If we take with the bishop, then the king is running. But we don't want to let the king run. So we take with the rook. We are attacking the queen. Oh, spicy. I mean, if I take pawn takes, it looks funny because, you know, there could be some, some, some potential checkmate. Spoiler, there is no checkmate. But I don't have to risk anything. So I'll just move my king away. And if you want to take the rook, go ahead. I'll take your queen. Actually not. I'll give you checkmate. That's, <laughs> that's what I'll do. Yes, and this is going to be checkmate anyway with a bishop. Look at this, because there is a rook here that is controlling, that was controlling those two squares. GG's. All right, guys, with the next game, we can get to 1800. Let's go. If we don't win this game, this video is an epic fail. And I'm going to publish it anyway, so let's go. E4, E4, E5. Great, so what do we play? So guys, I will play something that I was playing when I was a level of 1800, which is the four knight. I don't know if you've seen this opening. You go first out with the knight and it's called four knights because usually uh, both players are putting out their knights first. Now my opponent went out with the bishop, which is actually a mistake because now I'm going with the knight here and I'm smashing it in the center. If they take, you might have seen this in the previous game, because you go with the fork in the center. Attention, this doesn't work all the time. If you have a bishop here, you will get wrecked. Because the knight can capture the bishop and you lose. So be careful at the right timing. You need to do this just when the bishop is not on c4. Now, I'm happily taking gear and I have an extra pawn. What is my opponent doing here? So there is a bishop still hitting here. So it seems like this queen could go here and threaten checkmate, but it's not a big deal because the queen is not also attacking this pawn as the pawn is already defended. So not good. What is this move? Why h6? Okay, I think my opponent wants to develop this knight, avoiding the bishop, avoiding that the bishop could go there. Okay, but what if I slide with my queen here, attacking this pawn? Looks fancy. Papa, papa. I like to go there. Yeah, I like this because uh, my opponent played a move that is weakening this king's side. Now, if they push also g6, well, then it's really weak. And it's really weak. Then I can even go back with the queen because I say, like, I don't want to stay here with the queen because d5 isn't coming or d6 or d5 isn't coming. And my bishop uh, and the bishop is attacking the queen. So there is not a, this is not a safe square for the queen. But... I'm attacking this pawn, and if I can provoke a weakness, I'll be very happy. And oh, hell yeah, I provoked a huge weakness, because my opponent is no longer going to castle. That's nice. Okay, so we go back, as we said, because I don't want to stay with the queen there. We provoked what we want, uh, what we wanted, and now it's very good. We are threatening checkmate. Attention, everybody. Uh, how to keep going? I need to activate all my pieces, but I don't see a way to keep going, so I will simply castle, which is always a great move. Now, if this pawn is pushed, I will push my own pawn, attacking this one one more time. 
Let's notice that this pawn is also pinned, so cannot take. And also the bishop cannot take because I would simply take this pawn, cannot take back, so it would be a loss. How to go on here with white? We have to improve all the pieces. We have to bring this bishop to the action and hopefully also try to bring the rooks. Not so easy, uh, but we'll find a way. For example, already a way could be to make a fianchetto. It looks quite nice, painting this knight. Also, we can improve the knight. We can bring the rooks to the D and E file. All these moves look great. Okay, so the knight is attacking this pawn. I was frozen for a second. I think I can protect it with the bishop. Basically the only way, because I could push, but it doesn't look nice. So I'll look at bishop here, just protecting. The knight cannot take, of course, because after knight takes, I take, queen takes, and boom, checkmate. So that pawn is not hanging. Okay, bishop here. My opponent really wants to take the pawn. You're doing really great. Okay, I don't know why I'm thinking. Um, so what do we do here? Actually, my opponent has done a really good job, I have to admit. They played good. I'll just bring the rook. Yay. And, you know, maybe we will just have an equal position. I took. I will take. Now the knight takes. And I have to go with the queen back. So what do we get? We have a position with equal material. The only thing that we have is that I have more active pieces because they're just developed. This bishop is still stuck. This king is also in danger. Now, I feel like this move looks really nice. And now if c6 is played, I could give a check. Not sure because the pawn is just being pushed. Okay, I will just go here with the knight, maybe aiming for the square. And still this bishop is not developed. And now if the move d6 is played, Maybe I have the move if okay, um, king there, the king is running here, that's a great move, but not really possible because this queen can take the pawn. Guys, I think I have a giga smart move. It's a silent move that is not threatening much, but is blocking everything. And this is the following. Basically, what we are doing is that this pawn cannot be moved anymore, so this bishop is not going out. And if the bishop is not going out this way, well, it has to go out this way, which is not so promising because there is another pawn here. So it's really, it's really ugly. Now, this is also a free pawn. This is also a free check. And now we go with the knight here. That's great. We are about to give checkmates. Here, there are just so many threats. I think my opponent... It's happening! Yes! If king goes here, it's checkmate. If the king goes here, we take with the knight. And it's a fork to the king and the queen. My opponent might just resign. Bing, boom, bang. It doesn't happen that they always resign on the bank. But I try that all the time. Bang. <laughs> yes! We got it! I hope you guys enjoyed this video where I try to explain move by move while getting to 1800. Stay tuned because lots of other videos are incoming and you might want to check out this one. Remember to like and subscribe and see you next time.